Alrighty everyone, I just wanted to preface today's video by letting you know that two days ago, there was another video posted to the channel. It was a Minecraft cut com video with my friends. We are playing some high pixel Halloween mini games. And if you didn't see that, go check out the card on the top right corner or wait till the end of the video for the end card. Click on it and go check it out. It would mean a lot if you supported it. And let's jump straight into today's Pokemon Crown Tundra video. So for those of you who do not already know, today is the release date for the Crown Tundra. This is the second part of the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion pass. The first was the Isle of Armor that we got back in June, and now we're already here. It's It, it feels like Isle of Armor just came out, but we're getting the second and probably final piece of new content for Sword and Shield. Who knows what the future is going to mean for Pokemon, whether it's a remake next year, maybe some more Sword and Shield content. I don't know. I kind of feel like we might get a third DLC, uh, but we will see. But this video is going to be talking about my final thoughts going into Crown Tundra. Now, if you're watching this video on Thursday, you might already be playing Crown Tundra. We're not fully aware of what time Game Freak is going to be putting this out. It could be in the morning, in the afternoon. We do know that they want to do a simultaneous global release. This video might even be going out after Crown Tundra launches, and if it did, and you're already playing it, let me know what you guys are doing. Are you shiny hunting some of the new Pokemon? Are you migrating in some of your old guys that are now in the game? Are you playing the story? There's going to be a lot in this expansion, and I want to go over some of my most anticipated things. Now, I did do a... Um, top five kind of wish list esque video a couple months back for what I wanted to see from Crown Tundra. That's not exactly what I'm going to be doing in this video. This video is more of a, we know all this is happening. Here's my expectations. And I want to start with the legendaries. Now, something that we learned a couple days ago, and if you didn't hear this on Twitter, spoiler alert, you can click off now. Um, but when you defeat a legendary Pokemon in a raid den, so all of the new, all of the old legendaries are now coming back for these games you will get a 100% capture. So if you find a shiny variant of one of these legendaries and you defeat it, you will be able to catch that Pokemon. I saw a bit of controversy about this on Twitter. Some people saying, oh, that makes it less of a challenge. That's not as fun, but I really disagree. I think if you go through the struggle of getting to this legendary, eventually, if you shiny hunt it, getting it shiny form, picking out the Pokeball that you want to have it be captured in, all of those different things, I think you should be able to get it. Especially since these raids are going to be tough enough as is. If you didn't know, we're going to have uh, teams of Pokemon that we don't get to bring on our own. They're going to be rental Pokemon. You can go in with your friends or with NPCs, but the process already is going to be difficult. So being able to make sure you know that if I find this guy, I'm going to get it. I think that's good. I think that's healthy. Um, and I'm actually kind of in favor of the rental Pokemon. Now, it is a bit of a bummer, and I said it when it was revealed on, on social media that I wish I could use my own Pokemon. Part of the experience of Pokemon and part of the reason I have never been the biggest fan of something like the Battle Frontier and some of its facilities is that there were some rental facilities where you really didn't have that bond with a group of Pokemon, a, a specific team member that you raised, that you brought through the game, and that you're now using in these later stages. And I think it's a cool thing if I was able to bring my Swampert in from Pokemon Home, finally, now that the Hoenn uh, trio was going to be in this drop, uh, and be able to use him in these legendary raids. I think that would be really nice, but I think this is a fun little gimmick. I think this is a challenge, considering that We've had a lot of games where we can go back and capture the legendary Pokemon now, whether it was Hoopa's Rings in Oras, or if it was traveling to different dimensions in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Most people have these legendaries. This isn't a new thing. This isn't really something that we haven't had for a while. If you've been playing Pokemon for the last five years, then you have dozens of these legendaries to this point. I've got boxes and boxes organized in Pokemon Home of all the different legendaries from all the generations. It's not that I'm doing this because I want to get these guys finally. This is just a fun thing to add to the playing time, and it's something that on multiplayer I think could be really fun, and it's why I'm kind of bummed that I don't have a capture card yet for my Nintendo Switch, or else I would be live streaming the hell out of this when it drops. Doing raids with you guys I think would be fun as hell, and it's going to be something that we're doing in the future. I'm working on getting an Elgato capture card so I can do Nintendo Switch streams and videos and actually capture my own gameplay. It's coming. 
The next thing that I'm anticipating is the region, the, the mini region itself. In a lot of the promo material that we've gotten for the Crown Tundra since my last video, it talks about the community and the people and the, the civilization that exists in the Crown Tundra. It talks about it being a tight-knit community, uh, really brought together by the atmosphere and the environment that it lives in. And that's just amazing. For those of you who don't know, Sinnoh is my favorite region. Platinum is my favorite game, and part of the reason I love Platinum so much is, and Sinnoh itself, is because of the colder, snowy atmosphere. The mountainous region of Sinnoh, mixed with that colder chill in the air, is just, it's something that I really enjoy, it's an, it's an aesthetic that I find really pleasing, and the fact that we're getting this massive expanse of, of map here, where we're going to have that colder climate, we're going to have the mysteries of some of these legendary Pokemon, like the new Reggie, uh, the new Regis, the new Galarian uh, legendary birds. I think the atmosphere and some of the descriptions that we've gotten for the people who live in the Crown Tundra is really cool. The next thing that I'm interested in is finding out the mystery of Calyrex. Now, we do have a bit of information from some of the data mines. I'm not going to go into that here, but if you want to look that up for yourselves, it's available. I'm very interested to see what Calyrex is going to end up becoming. We know it's a legendary Pokemon, I believe. I don't think it's mythical. Uh, and it's it's described as a very kingly Pokemon. It rules over Galar. To see how that inter intertwines with the, the mystery of the two kings, the king dogs um, of the Galar region, and how that all comes together is going to be really interesting to me. There's a lot of legendary lore that they kind of saved for the Crown Tundra. We got the expletives, um, not expletives, we got the, the story of Galar in the main game of Sword and Shield about the two legendary dogs, the two legendary wolves that protected the Galar region on the darkest day. And I'm very interested to see how they now expand that with Calyrex, especially because we don't really have a trio master for Zashin and Zamazenta. Some might say Eternatus. I don't really agree that Eternatus is the Trio Master. He seems like a very, very much a separate Pokemon. Whereas Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina all seem to kind of form a trio, there doesn't seem to be that unifying third legendary for this region. So it's going to be interesting to see how Calyrex fits into all of that. Additionally, I'm really excited for all the returning Pokemon. We've seen a lot of them from the data mine of the Isle of Armor, so we know a ton that are coming back. Uh, without spoiling a ton, there's some starters, there's some uh, some older Pokemon, some newer Pokemon. There's a lot being added, and it's going to be really cool to really have a much, much larger Pokedex now that the Crown Tundra is dropping. On top of legendaries and the amazing environment and the returning Pokemon and the lore of the legendaries, another thing that I'm very much anticipating is the music. We've heard almost nothing from the Crown Tundra. We've heard music from the trailers, which sounds like overworld music, but we haven't heard any new battle themes. We haven't, I don't believe we've heard the theme for the, um, the raid dens. There's a lot that we get to finally hear, and I'm also hoping that once Crown Tundra drops, we're finally going to get the soundtrack for Sword and Shield as a whole dropped, because that's something we're missing so far. Most of the music that we have from Sword and Shield is ripped straight from the game and then uploaded online. We never got a full soundtrack yet. So to finally have the Sword and Shield mainland Galar music, the Isle of Armor music, which some of those battle themes were just fantastic. And then eventually now to have the Crown Tundra music, it's going to be great. Some of the best music in Pokemon is the most atmospheric music, whether it's the music in the northern routes of Sinnoh or some of the ruin music in Silesian Town or in the ruins of Alf in the Johto region. Getting some more atmospheric winter music from the Crown Tundra is honestly probably one of my biggest hopes and expectations from this game, uh, this DLC. It's going to be a great time. I'm really excited for the Crown Tundra to drop, to finally experience it. I've been working all week at Shiny Hunting, a Galarian Slowpoke. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want updates on that. By the time this video goes out, maybe, fingers crossed, I'll have it. I'll let you know in the description down below in the comment section. Uh, but we do know that we're getting a Galarian Slowking in the Crown Tundra, and he looks really cool. He's the perfect fit for Halloween, like I mentioned in the previous Crown Tundra video, and I've been working to get a shiny of him. Hopefully, it'll, come, it'll happen by the time this uh, video drops and by the time Crown Tundra drops, but we'll see. So 
Now that you've heard some of my final thoughts going into Crown Tundra, I want to know what you think. What are your biggest expectations for this? And what are your expectations for Pokemon moving forward? There's a lot of belief among the community that next year we're going to get the Holy Grail. We're going to get those Diamond and Pearl remakes. Uh, what do you guys think? I've always been on the team that I think we're going to get Diamond and Pearl remakes next, but I would not put it against Pokemon to drop a third set of DLC, a third expansion, maybe in January or February before that. So let me know what you guys think. I hope you're excited to play the Crown Tundra just as much as I am. And the next video on the Crown Tundra and on Pokemon as a whole will probably be my review. So we'll have three videos on the Crown Tundra on the channel when all is said and done. With that being said, I've blabbered on for far too long. I hope you're getting into the Crown Tundra today as I am. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.